Yesterday we learned how to write ionic compounds, their formula and the name. Okay, believe it or not, of all the compounds in the world, the vast minority of them are ionic compounds, and yet they're so important to us in chemistry because most of what we will be doing in chemistry is we will be playing around with ionic compounds. There's a whole branch of chemistry called organic chemistry that deals with molecular compounds or nonmetal nonmetals. Okay, so on Thursday and Friday, we will deal with them just a little bit. There's two more types of formulas. This by far is the hardest type. Okay, so let's go through it again. If you become a geologist, you will be dealing mostly with ionic compounds, metal nonmetals like the minerals that can be found in this lake right here in this uh, geologic formation. If you become an artist and you deal a lot with uh, plaster of Paris, that's ionic compounds. That's ionic compounds. If you become a painter, a lot, of your, uh, a lot of your paints are actually based on ionic compounds. Ionic comp so ionic compounds are extremely useful. All right? So, all right, so chemists have very good reasons for believing that some compounds are made up of ions. How do they know? Well, number one, they conducted this experiment. They tried to get solid ionic compound, like solid sodium chloride, to conduct electricity. It didn't work. So, hmm, I thought it's made up of ions. Why doesn't it work? But then when you melt the sodium chloride, it works. It conducts electricity. They tried this experiment. Pure water didn't conduct electricity. Dissolve some sodium chloride. It works. It conducts electricity. Why? Because, and this is something I'm going to tell you many, many times this year. In order to conduct electricity, you need positive and or negative things, which ionic compounds are made up of positive and or negative things, right? And those things need to be able to move around. As a solid, can they move around? No. They can't. They're stuck together. But if they were to melt, can they move around now? Or if they were to dissolve in water, they can move around. So those are simple experiments that really help people to understand that these ionic compounds were made up of metal, non-metal ions. So in review, Take some water, run electricity through it, nothing happens. Take some water, run electricity through it with salt dissolved in it, all of a sudden it can conduct electricity. So those of you who are going, hmm, so does that mean if I had pure water pool that I didn't have to get out of it if a thunderstorm came? Well, technically, yes, but guess what? Is it pure anymore if you're in it. No, you've now made it something that can conduct electricity. Thanks. The sweat off your body would be enough to let it conduct electricity. Okay, so what do chemists now believe about ionic compounds? That they consist of positive and negative ions, which are tightly together, packed together in a predictable pattern. You can actually predict what shape they're going to have. They're held together by the fact that positives and negatives like each other. They will like to glue to each other. Okay, so here's a picture of salt. Notice it's not one Na and one Cl. It's many Na's and many Cl's. But for every Na, you have one Cl. So what we're going to find with ionic compounds is that the formula actually reflects the lowest whole number ratio. So instead of saying Na 6 billion, Cl 6 billion, we just go, it's just NaCl. This is NaCl magnified under a very, very powerful microscope. And isn't that neat? Look at these straight edges. So how does this explain its ability to conduct electricity? I just did. Once the ions are able to move around, then they can conduct. But while they're still a solid, they're stuck together. Okay, what, what else have they discovered about these compounds? They have no overall charge. So however they're arranged, they're arranged in order to neutralize each other. 
So what are ionic compounds? Compounds between positive metal ions, what I like to metaphorically call a guy, and a non-metal, what I like to metaphorically call a girl. It is also possible that that guy can be married to a group of girls, which, if you don't believe me, really happens, and there's a TLC show called Sister Wives about this dude that's married to five girls and a lot of kids. So, hey, it's not beyond, the metaphor is not beyond uh, real life, okay? So, let's learn to write chemical formulas. Two types, there are two types of guys. Type one is a guy that you could always rely on. Hey, what's your charge, plus one? What's your charge? Plus one. What about now? Plus one. Ten days later? Plus one. Two years later? Plus one. Twenty years? Plus one. Those are type one guys. Then there's type two. Girls, you know some of these guys. Hey, how are you feeling? I'm feeling kind of plus two today. And then the next day, how are you feeling today? Or plus two? No, I'm feeling plus three. Why? I just don't know. I'm feeling plus three. Then the next day, how are you feeling today? I'm back to feeling plus two today. Why? I don't know. Okay, so these type twos are guys that come in various charges and you never really know what their charge is, which is going to make it interesting to try to name them. All right, so type ones are really easy. Just like traditionally, the guy never changes his name. The girl does. Okay, same way, guy changes his name, cation name is, stays the same, anion, which is the negative ion, the girl, she changes the last part of her name to IDE. What about if it's a package? You have to go to Costco to buy that anion, where do you get it? I mean, I'm sorry, what happens to the name? It stays the same. Stays the same. All right. I'm going to have to get this. I'm sorry. It's maskers. Yes, Mama. Mama Reagan? Okay. Oh, well. I'll call her later. All right. Um, so, if you buy the anion at Walmart, change it to IDE. Walmart meaning... The periodic table, the periodic table. If you find it at Costco, leave the name alone. Leave the name alone. All right, so here we go. Allison, you want to start us up? CSF. CS, what is CS? CS is cesium. Cesium. Fluorine, do you find that at Walmart or in Costco? Walmart. So what do you do to the ending? Awesome. ALCL3. Max. No, Walmart. Okay. No, I told you guys have to be ready. So what's AL? Any questions? MGI2. Marco. Uh, yes. What is it? Iodine is her unmarried name. Iodide. Iodide. All right. So let's deal with the guys that are wishy washy. Cation name first, and ion last. The cation needs a Roman numeral. Using a Roman numeral, you communicate what charge it has. All right. Now, everyone needs to pay attention. Everyone needs to pay attention because these are tricky. Okay? 
Um, there is an old way of doing this without Roman numerals, and I need to tell you about it. An old way. A re it's so old that at that time they only used Latin. Okay? So, instead of telling you the Roman numeral, they would end the guy's name with ick or with us. Ick or us. Ick means the higher charge. Us means the lower charge. And then they use the Latin name. So, Latinic means higher. Lat Latinus means lower. Okay. So, Ferric and Ferrus. What's Ferric? Okay, thank you. What's the element? Iron. So, which charge is it? And iron ferrous is <coughs> Morgan plum bus plum bus. Give me the symbol. <coughs> PB charge plum bus plus two. Very good. Because if it was plumbic, it would be the higher. Simon. Stanic. Stanic. So you're looking for an element that has an old Latin name that begins with S and maybe a T or an N or something like that. Tin. And which charge? Which is? Try again. If your periodic table says plus three, it's wrong. It's plus four. And Stan S would be Sn plus two. Okay, you got it? So either Roman numeral or Icarus. Now I'm going to ask you, don't use this traditional way of naming. Because it's going to confuse the people who are going to be grading your quizzes. It's going to, and it may confuse me. But be ready to recognize it. You'll see it in your homework. I use it in the homework. Okay, be ready to recognize it, but you don't have to use it. Copper 2 sulfate. Beautiful blue crystals. What's another name of, instead of copper 2, what would you call it? Cupric. Cupric sulfate. If it was copper 1, it would have been Cuprous, and it would have been green, by the way. The color would have been green. So yeah, one difference in electron changes the color. Yeah, it does. Give the name of the, each of the following. You're all paying attention, right? Sasquatch, give me C-U-C-L-O-3. He is absolutely correct. But how did he know that it was copper one? Let me show you. Put on your Sherlock Holmes hats. We're going to have to do some detective work. Okay, do, can we not agree that all ionic compounds are made up of positive and negative ions, right? So you just split it down the middle. This is the positive side, and this is the, the negative side. Are we good so far? And you got to do this all the time until you can kind of see it in your brain. All right. What do we know? How many chlorates do we have? Don't say three. One. Don't say three. One. One. Okay. This is the package, right? Three is part of the package. Please don't say three. It's the package. Noah, what is the charge on chlorate? So if you have one negative one, then what is the total negative charge? It's easy. Negative one. 
Okay, so if the negative side is negative one, no, what well, must be the positive side? Okay, how many coppers do you have? One. One times what gives you positive one? Yeah. So what is it? It's copper one. Okay, that was easy. Uh, no one's going to do a harder one. All right, which one is this? One or two? Okay, let's review this again. Ready? Okay, gang. Mercury, well, if it, ha if it has a star on it, then the star must be referring to something that you explain on that periodic table. Hopefully it is. Mercury one is HG two plus two. Why? Because... Mercury 1 is that, right? It's what you would think that would be. Unfortunately, Mercury, have you heard of Siamese twins? Yeah. Siamese twins are connected somehow bodily to their twin. Mercury 1 is a Siamese twin. So Mercury 1, you will never find alone. You'll always find it with its twin. So if you see one Mercury 1, you see two Mercury 1s. That is why Mercury 1 has a 2 here, and it has a total of a plus 2. All right, that's a clue right there, Noah, because is this Siamese twins? No. So it must be Mercury 2. Which does not have a twin attached to it. They're both going to have the same charge, but... One is going to have a twin, and the other one's not. Okay, so it's Mercury. All right, this one's hard. Marie, this is as hard as they get. What is it? Let's work on that set next. Iron what? Iron something, and what's the end of it? No, is it something you would buy at Walmart or something you would buy at Costco? Is it a single thing or is it a group? It's a group, isn't it? C and then three O's. So where do you find this group? Got to go to Costco. Go to Costco, which is the back of the periodic table. Do you see CO3? Carbonate. Ah, you tester. Okay, here we go. You like Sherlock Holmes, the new one on BBC? It is awesome. Put on your Sherlock Holmes hat. Cut it in half. Left side is the positive or negative? Right side is? Okay, how many carbonates do you have? Three. For a charge of? Negative two. Negative two. Three times negative two? Negative if the negative side is negative six, what must the positive side be? Okay, this is what we're after. That's what we want. Two times what is positive six, Marie? Nope. Okay. Allison wants to take a picture of this. But I'm going to say, hey, there is a YouTube video that I made especially for people like Allison where I explain this step by step, how to do it. It's called Thinking Through Chemistry Ionic Compounds. How to write and name ionic compounds. It's, I, I, yes, it is upright already because I did it for my general chemistry class. Okay, general, or you can ask a general chemist, they would love to explain this to you because you know they they sometimes feel like, wow, we're just CP chemistry. Well, they're way ahead of you, they think this stuff is easy. 
So you can always ask a CP chemistry, my CP chemistry class. All right. How about HG2O2? Phobos. Mercury? What? Yes. If it has a Siamese twins, gets, guess what? It's Mercury 1. Mercury 1 what? No. That's not possible. Let me explain this to you. Okay, everyone paying attention because this is an oddball and you need to be aware of it because every so often you will encounter it. If it was mercury one oxide, then this is mercury one, correct? Right? Agree? Oxygen is negative two. So what is this formula? It's, it's balanced. Agree? Yeah, but that's not that. Look in Costco. There is a freakazoid. Look at Costco under negative two charge. Oh. The only way this makes sense is if you have a mercury one peroxide. Peroxide. If you have a negative one, a ne uh, uh, mercury one, and peroxide, which is O2 negative two. So the only way you can have that is if you're dealing with peroxide. So my advice to you is if you encounter something that and it has oxygen in it and it doesn't make any sense, chances are that you are dealing with peroxide. Yes? Oxide, that's because oxide is Walmart. It's oxygen. It's just O negative 2. All right, one last one. Ruthie. PB, what is it? Lead. Lead what? Okay, that's okay. What's, what's, what else? We'll come back to it. Chlorine, is that something you find at Walmart or something you find at Costco? Walmart. Okay, so do we change the name? Right. Yes. All right, so Ruthie's not sure whether this is lead to or lead for one more time. Ruthie, cut it in half. Negative side, positive side. What is the charge on chlorine? Um, one. Four times negative one is? which means the positive side must be one times what is positive four? Yes, Phoebe. Because if you find periodic uh, chlorine on the periodic table, right above it, it says negative one. Noah. No, that won't work. It doesn't form these Siamese twins things. All right, let's go backwards. Backwards. Uh, ester, barium hydroxide. No talking. Ryan, I want you to work on mercury one chloride. Stefan. Mercury one chloride. Stefan, I want you to work on aluminum dichromate. And what? Test. What test? No, no, that's yours. And Natalie, I want you to work on chromium three cyanide. All right. So Esther, go. Hold on. Hold on. I lost the ability to write. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, no, it's 
Sorry. Hold on. Stop laughing at me. I'm having technical difficulties. All right. BA. Charge. This is how to do these things without the little cards. Plus two. Hydroxide. That's IDE. That's probably an element, right? No. Yes, it ends IDE like you would find something in Walmart, but it's actually Costco. What is it? Okay. No talking. Paying attention. All right. So which charge do you have too much of? You can't take anything away, but you can add. So what are you going to have to add? Now do the charges balance. Final answer? Okay. Did she get it at Costco? Yes. Does she have more than one of them? Yes. Parentheses. Or else... It looks like it has one oxygen and two hydrogens. Compare that to this, which is wrong. How many bariums? One. How many oxygens? One. How many hydrogens? And that's absolutely wrong. Okay, it's how many bariums? One. How many hydroxides? Two. All right, who did I ask to do mercury one chloride? Ryan, go. H-G-1-C-L. One C-L. No, like the... You gotta put the Roman numeral. No, you don't. no, you don't. I am so glad he did that. I am so glad. Why is it... No, 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 no. The Roman numerals is for the name. It is not for the formula. You can figure out the Roman numeral from the formula. You never, ever, ever put a Roman numeral in a formula. Okay, let's try it again. HGCL. No. No? No. You know why? Because you forgot that Mercury 1 is a Siamese twin. Oh, HGCL2. No. no. It is a Siamese <laughs> twin. HG, what should be on your periodic table is that Mercury 1 is HG2 plus 2. What do you mean? Like, there's nothing on then you need to get together with Sasquatch and copy down all that information very quickly. Okay, not now, Ryan. But help me finish here. What's the charge on chloride? Uh, plus two, I think. No, let me tell you. The periodic table, if you had it, would say minus one on it. Okay, so... Very good. That's right. Yeah, we did that on Friday, and you were in football. All right. So you need that information. Aluminum dichromate, who's doing that one? Stefan. Okay, let's take it one step at a time. Charge on aluminum. Dichromate ends in ATE, which means that you finally you got it at Costco. Okay, go, Costco. What is it? All right, so you have too much positive. So what do you do? No, you can't divide. You can't divide. You can only add ions. No, 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 no. What you have too much positive, so you need more negative. Now is it even? What do you have too much of? Negative side or positive side? Now is it even? No. Dang! What do you have too much of now? Now is it even? Negative six? Positive six. So how many ALs? How many CR207s? Right? Did you get it at Costco? Yeah. You need parentheses. Yes? When there's a mercury, and it's 
That's the lower of the two charges. I know, but what's the lower one? No, mercury one or mercury two, which one's lower? Okay, chromium three cyanide. Who did I ask to do that? Natalie, you get the hardest one of them all, go. What's, uh, what's charge on, what's the uh, symbol for chromium? What's the charge? No, I gave it to you. What is it? No, I gave it to you. What is it? Okay, she's confused. You know why? Because she's looking on the periodic table and I didn't give it to her on the periodic table. So where did I give it to you? Look at the name, my dear. Chromium 3. So what is the charge? Cyanide. Cyanide, IDE, that's probably an element. Is there cyanium or something like that? No? Look on the Costco side. Is it there? No. Put it in there. Cyanide. Put it in that chart. Cyanide is CN negative 1. Ryan, polyatomic ion. Right below it, there's like a line. CN negative 1. There's enough room there to make another polyatomic ion. Cyanide. CN negative 1. All right, now Natalie. Okay, you said CR3? Th CR... Yeah. Because you need how many CNs to balance it out? Three. Very good. Good job. All right. So, when we come back together, we're going to be dealing with molecular...